versus Hypothesis versus Theory versus Law. Hello, and welcome to our video. My name is Rizke Rimbaun Asti, and I'm accompanied by Safinatul Aula. Hello. And in this video, we're gonna make an explanation about four major concepts in science, which is fact, hypothesis, theory, and law. So let's get into it. You may heard someone disparates evolution because it is just a theory. Meanwhile, gravity, on the other hand, must be 100% real, which makes it as a law. After all, it is so pro uh, truly proven. You might even call it a scientific fact. Unfortunately, all this common impression aren't, qu aren't quite right. The words fact, hypothesis, theory, and law have a very specific meanings in the world of science, and they don't exactly match the one we use in everyday language. So let's just jump right in in the first section, which is fact. So this one is pretty straightforward, but it's got a big caveat. In science, a fact is an observation that's been confirmed so many times that scientists can, for all intents and purposes, accept it as true. But everything in science comes with a level of uncertainty. So nothing is ever scientifically true beyond a shadow of a doubt. You could say that all swans are white is a fact. But there's always the chance you could see a black swan and throw that fact out of the window. Likewise, you could say it's a fact that every time you let go of a pencil, it will drop to the floor. But science leaves room for the vanishingly infinitesimally small chance that it might not. So what about hypothesis then? A hypothesis is a tentative explanation about an observation that can be tested. It's just a starting point for a further investigation. Any one observation usually comes with an array of hypotheses. If you observe that a swan is white, your hypothesis could be that it's painted or it was bleached by the sun, or its feathers just lack pigment. You can then investigate all of these hypotheses and come away with the one that's most supported by the evidence, if any. Throughout history, there have been many hypotheses about why things fall when you drop them. Aristotle believe it was because a material object had a tendency to fall towards the center of the universe, which the ancient Greeks believed was Earth. Newton, on the other hand, reasoned that all Earth-bound objects must be attracted to Earth, but also all planets must also be attracted to other planets and so on with every object in the universe. His hypothesis was still all happened through a force of attraction that he called gravity. Next, there is law. You might expect theory to be the next natural step in this path of scientific truth, but you'd be wrong. That's not to say that law is inferior to the theory. These two things just different things altogether. In science, a law is detailed description of how some aspect of the natural world behaves, usually involving math. Newton's law of universal gravitation, as quoted above, describes the way matter behaves with impressive precision. It makes it easy to predict how a moon will act if it's very big and close to its planet versus very small and far away. But how is it all it describes? It doesn't explain why. As an example, 
Any particle of matter in the universe attracts any other with a force varying directly as the product of the masses and inversely as the square of the, the distance between them. So next, we'll be discussing about theory. A theory is an explanation of some aspect of the natural world that's well substantiated by fact, tested by hypothesis and laws. Quoted above is a simplified version of Einstein's general theory of relativity. Newton said that two objects attract based on how massive they are and the distance between them. Einstein said this happened because the mass of each object literally distort the fabric of the universe, and the greater the mass, the greater the distortion. A theory is the granddaddy of all scientific statements, which is why it makes no sense to say that evolution is just a theory. As Johansson put it in his video for it's okay to be smart, stop saying it like a bad thing. Calling it a theory means it's past the toughest test that we can throw at it, and evolution has been tested maybe more than any theory that we know of. But, as we said, science never says anything within 100% certainty. Einstein theory breaks down when you apply it to quantum mechanics, which deals with the behavior of tiny subatomic particles. As a result, Many scientists are throwing new hypotheses about gravity into the ring. But that doesn't mean Einstein was wrong. General relativity explains the vast majority of our observations. And every time scientists have tried to prove it wrong, they've failed. That's the strength of a scientific theory. It's built on a sturdy enough foundation that even if you find a few cracks in it, you can trust that the structure as a whole will remain standing. As an example, mass and energy cause space-time to curve, and the force of gravity arises from the curvature of space-time. Okay, so I guess that's all from us. Thank you for watching. I hope our materials that we share could help you in any way. Thank you. See you later. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye-bye.